Part 2. Verdant Wind. Guardian Moon. The Alliance Leader's Ambitions. Claiming the monastery at Garrig Mach as its home base, the Alliance Army joins forces with the Knights of Seros. Together, they begin to take up arms against the Adrestian Empire. Good work, Hilda. You didn't do much manual labor, but you managed to rope the knights into helping us restore the monastery. Thanks, Claude. But all I did was piggyback on your scheme. I saw your eyes telling me to make some magic happen. Thank you so much for your help with the restoration. Oh, please, it was nothing. We're just doing our part as former students. I'm told you even routed the bandits. That job should have fallen to us. I'm sorry for the trouble. Hey, don't think twice about it. We're all allies in the resistance against the Empire, right? The Church is at war with the Empire, but let's be realistic. Wouldn't it be better for the Alliance to eventually submit? The way I see it, the Emperor wants to take over all of Fodlan and destroy the existing order of the world. I can't see her allowing the Alliance to continue to exist. We're in this just as deeply as you are. Actually, we were hoping to use this place as a base. The Empire begs to be meddled with, and we're first in line. What? Why would you want to make your base here of all places? Garrick Mach is situated in the center of Fodlan, both geographically and spiritually. We want to secure this location while the Empire is still overlooking it. I see. The Empire doesn't see this place as important at the moment because it's far from the front lines. But if we simply decide that it's ours to occupy, that does nothing to inspire the hearts and minds of the people of Fodlan. Luckily, good old Teach has finally returned to us. If the Professor Rhea entrusted with the Sword of the Creator fights at our side, well now, that's a just cause anyone could get behind. What's more, here we are, working alongside the legendary Knights of Saros. It smacks of divine providence, doesn't it? Can you feel it? I have heard what you have to say, Claude. And you, Professor? Where do you stand? Hmm. On our own, we lack sufficient military strength. But with the help of the Alliance... The Archbishop said if anything should happen to her, that we should entrust the affairs of the Church to you. If you intend to fight alongside the Alliance, then I will follow you as well. Is that acceptable, Claude? Of course. I can't think of anything more reassuring than having both Teach and the Knights on our side. Together, we'll stop the Emperor and her reckless ambitions. Everyone, listen up. I have a proposal. We are now building our forces in order to rise up against the Imperial Army. But it wouldn't be smart for us to fight under the banner of the Alliance. That would only incite the Lords who support the Empire. We've also combined forces with the Knights of Saros. Therefore, I suggest that we operate under a new symbol. That's why I've prepared this. You may recognize it as the Crest of Flames, which resides in Teach, the phantom crest that has reappeared after more than a thousand years. We're attempting our own miracle, so it seems like a suitable symbol for us. So, until we welcome the dawn of a new age in Fodlan, let's fight to the very end as one under the symbol of the Crest of Flames. Impressive, Claude. Forget restoring the monastery. You've somehow roped everyone into fighting back against the Empire. If you recall, I never technically asked anyone to join us. If anything, we have Teach's achievements to thank. Now that you mention it, I guess I should express my gratitude. Hey, friend. So this is where you've been. Without you, the Knights never would have joined our cause. I can never pay you back for that. Just leave it to me, Teach. When this fight is over, I plan to see all of my dreams come to fruition. And yours as well. Well, for example, to bust open Fodlan's throat. There's a massive fortress there which is responsible for protecting the eastern border of the Alliance. I like to think of it as a lid on a bottle. The people of Fodlan only know a small part of the world, 
Their prejudices are born because they don't know what lies beyond their borders. And the opposite is true too. Those outside of Fodland don't know about this place. Ignorance breeds discrimination. Whether you look inside the bottle or outside of it, if you really look, all you'll find are people who you can get along with if you only try. That's why I want to bust open that lid, which is keeping us locked inside, or destroy the bottle entirely. I'll find the right time to bring it up. Even if I talked about it now, it doesn't seem realistic, does it? First, we need to defeat the Empire and restore peace to... Huh? Professor! Claude! We're under attack! I guess we'll have to cut our conversation short. What's going on, Leone? It's a small group, but some Imperial troops are headed this way. It looks like they were stationed nearby. I've got a hand it to Edelgard. Nothing gets past that woman. As long as we don't let our guard down, there's no way they can defeat us. This will be our first battle alongside the Knights of Saros. Let's kick off our new partnership with a magnificent victory. Though plans to resist the Empire are still being devised by the Alliance Army, the Imperial Army has already anticipated their next move. An Imperial vanguard just outside Garrig Mach, led by General Randolph, begins to advance with the aim of toppling the monastery once again.
Knights of Seros are a powerful enemy, but we have more soldiers. We'll take them down all at once. So, the enemy intends to use their overwhelming numbers to defeat us. Let's fight fire with actual fire. Report, the enemy has entered the periphery of Garrig Mok. If they reach the interior, the enemy will take the monastery. Drive them back immediately. What's my strategy? It won't be in vain. My orders? They're ready. We're all desperate, aren't we? Let's go. Steady now. Thanks for that. Outcome. More battles means more strength. to me. Shall we?
shall we? wasn't personal. I am getting to the heart of it. strange battle flag is... But isn't our enemy the Church of Saros? They didn't have enough soldiers with just the Church, so they upped their numbers by joining with those filthy rogues. It doesn't matter what flag they fly. They're nothing more than a mob. We'll destroy them all! Close for my life. Soldiers are making preparations for the plan. Protect them. I must keep going. Another victory. There is still room for improvement. another one. I can still fight. Be gone with you! Our quarrel wasn't personal.
good, but not enough. Hey, look at you. Lady Rhea. This still isn't good enough. I admire you. That helps. That helps. Got yourself kept. Shall we? How about 
without a curtsy. to lose. Decent form. Should have seen that coming. Am I getting closer? That's another one.
fight for Justice's name. Stronger. Strength is all for a mercenary. yourself get hey. leave it to me Disappointing. Prepared for the fire attack. Now we just need to draw the enemy's attention. You can't defeat us with that many soldiers? The Imperial Army is doomed without a capable general. Quiet! Don't think you'll get away with mocking me. Attack! Make sure they never speak again! Now! A 
fire attack. The damage is too great. We can't fight anymore. All units retreat. I'll take on our pursuers. Carry away the injured soldiers. If we let them escape, they'll come back to attack later. We have to take them out. Close for my life. Sorry, it's gotta be like this.
I'm not a kid anymore! <laughs> That's what you get. More effective. You're amazing. No time to slow down. Much needed. Coral wasn't personal. Amazing. Appreciate it. Turn home like this. Teach, look out! They're after your head! Getting closer? things you can't learn in a book.
my house for justice. I will not be defeated. <laughs> Mother, please. I'm so. Those Imperial troops are really something. Looks like we'll face a lot of resistance in the future. Phew, nice work. We won without much incident, thanks to all of you. Now the enemy knows we're on the move. What do you plan to do? I intend to ask the Alliance Lords to share some troops with us to bolster our forces. I will speak plainly. No matter whom we beseech for reinforcements, our envoys will inevitably pass through Gloucester territory. My father is being cautious not to give the Empire a pretext to intervene. Therefore, he is unlikely to allow even envoys to pass through. Ah, I guess I haven't told you yet, Teach. The Kingdom isn't in a position to be sending anyone reinforcements. After losing King Lambert during the tragedy of Dusker, a regent had been handling its politics. But then, there was a bloody coup. The regent and Prince Dimitri both. Apparently the whole family was killed. All bladed territory, including the Kingdom capital, is being ruled by those who are cooperating with the Empire. The Kingdom is no more. It's now called the Fargus Dukedom. The vast majority of the former Kingdom Lords bent a knee to the overwhelming power of the Empire and the Dukedom, and now fall under their jurisdiction. Some who formerly held power are continuing to resist, but it would be difficult for them to regain it. Oh hey, I can think of one person who we can ask for reinforcements. Someone whose territory is really close and who's on good terms with Clyde. Ah, the hero of Daphne, I presume. I've seen her before, and she does seem to be reliable. You're talking about Judith, right? I bet she would lend us a hand. That's right, you've met her once before, Teach. She's a fearsome one-woman army. She did a lot for me, even before I was recognized as the heir to House Regan. I don't like the idea of owing her more than I already do, but given the current situation, sacrifices must be made. I'll reach out to her. As for the rest of you, prepare for our next battle. Hey, Teach. How are you feeling? Does anything feel... Um, strange at all? Well, you were asleep for five whole years, after all. It'll probably take time to get you back to top form. Though, I'm relieved to see you haven't lost a step as far as combat goes. Your command bringing my schemes to life. That's just how we fight best. Not yet, but there's no need to worry. That woman adores me. Once we've bolstered our forces, it'll finally be time to start taking decisive action. But I wonder, do you really think Rhea is still alive? I think so, too. It's hard to imagine the death of someone as important as her staying a secret. I wonder where she is and what she's doing. That's a dangerous question, Teach. To be honest, I've given it a lot of thought. All I know is that I still have a lot of questions I need to ask her about the true history of crest stones and heroes' relics, and the truth behind the legend of Seros and Nemesis. She has secrets. Too many of them for my comfort. Considering the state of the world, it's suspicious. 
you must be curious about what was done to you and what her plans were for you, right? And you never did learn about your mother, did you? None of our doubts will ever be cleared unless we hear these answers from Rhea herself. In that sense, I absolutely hope Rhea is still alive. But as far as Fodlan goes, I do wonder what a world without Rhea would look like. The majority of people in Fodlan believe in the Saros faith that Rhea preaches. That's why they accept the noble system as if it were the only option, and refuse to associate with those who believe in anything else. That closed-minded philosophy is the reason why Fodlan's throat is locked tight. But if you remove the archbishop who strictly advocates that doctrine, that worldview is no longer an absolute. There's room for free thought. The leadership of the church would undoubtedly fall to you, and you would hold the power to change the shape of the faith, of the world. Then, for the first time, people would truly be free to think for themselves, to decide what's right and what's wrong. Honestly, I believe Edelgard is probably hoping to achieve something very similar. But her methods require too much bloodshed. That's not something the world can get behind. Anyway, the best thing we can do is find Rhea and hear what she has to say. <laughs> Oops. Uh, I guess I've been going on for a while now. Sorry about that. You should get some rest. <laughs>